Hello, hello, ladies, and welcome. My name is Emily Aldridge, and this is Inner Work for Greater Good. So glad to have you here. Um, uh, sorry, I'm kind of all over the place. I'm out of my regular uh, location. Usually I'm in my apartment in New York, but this is actually my childhood bedroom. It's changed a bit since then. Um, and I'm sitting on a bed and my computer is on pillows. And so as I move, the computer moves. So sorry about that. But you can kind of see a little bit of, you know, how, you know, not necessarily where I grew up, but yeah, this was my room until it got redecorated over the years. Um, then anyway, uh, I'm, uh, this is all about inner work for greater good, and we teach you how to do inner work that accelerates your power to change the world, to make a difference, to shine your brightest light, and, and do whatever it is that you feel called to do more effortlessly and with more joy and freedom and ease. Okay, I think my brain is starting to get clicked back in. <laughs> Um, I wanted to talk about something that has come up. Actually, it's, it's almost been like a theme uh, this past week in terms of the conversations I've had with people. <clears throat> and people have been telling me various stories that ultimately come down to for them that the people around them just don't get it. You know, maybe they've shared something with that person and the other person just doesn't get it or their family doesn't get what they're telling them. Um, they just don't understand. Or in other cases, it's you know, people who've been, um, you know, in conflict with someone else and trying to get that person to see the light and the other, and they just don't see it um, for any number of reasons. I mean, I'll give you a few different examples of this. So one of them was actually in a session that I did that's going to be on the podcast. And basically one of, you know, her inner child was, was she really saw a lot of truth as a child in terms of the conflict and things that were going on around her. Um, and so she saw that. And even as a child, she tried to prevail upon her parents and others in her home to get them to see like, this isn't healthy what you're doing and why are you hurting each other this way, et cetera. But, but the, the people around her, the adults, they just rationalized their behaviors and they just dismissed her and they just, you know, basically didn't honor the wisdom that she was bringing to them as a child. They just didn't understand or they didn't want to understand, which is a whole other level too. Um, another example was I was talking with someone who came to me and said that she had been diagnosed with something, a certain kind of mental um, ish, uh, mental health issue. And yet when she told the people around her, they didn't they didn't believe her. They dismissed it. They, you know, said, well, you're just choosing to be this way. Um, and that was clearly very, very, very painful for her. Another example, um, I've actually had a number of friends in the last few years who've gone through divorces because they're husbands have had some issues and no matter how many times they tried to get through to their husbands to say look you have a problem it's this or that the husbands just won't they won't see it they um and then not only that they'll actually end up doubling down with their behaviors um so the point is you know i've had quite a few conversations at least in the last week with some of these people and so i realized you know what how painful it is when the people around us just don't get it, when they just don't understand whatever it is that we see is true or we believe to be true. This strikes at the core, at one core need I found, and this is something I do a lot in my sessions. When I talk to an inner child or an inner wall or an inner critic or whatever, I do a lot of validation. So I validate that part's feelings. I validate their behaviors in terms of like, I get it. Like I'll say to that part, like, yeah, yeah. I can really see why you felt that you, you know, you felt the need to do that. Let's say it's a wall. I can really see why you felt the need to build this really thick wall to protect the person. You know, I can really, I get it. So a lot of what I do is I validate those parts and validating helps those parts to calm down and think about it this way for yourself. When someone says to you, yeah, I can really see why you feel that way. Oh, yeah, I totally get it. I went through a similar thing and it was really, really hard. When we have our feelings validated, when we have our perceptions of reality validated, when we have our truths validated, things that we know to be true, when others validate those, it really can give you this feeling of like, ah, oh, yes, yes, that's what I've been trying to get through to other people or that's what, yeah, it's, it's such a healing thing. And I found that when I work with parts, it's a big part of it because a lot of times these parts inside, right now I'm talking in terms of the, the inner parts, um, but you know, the parts inside, they need this validation just as we need this validation. 
that validates our perception, that validates our own truth, um, that says, I see you, I hear you, I'm not arguing with you, I get it. Um, and the person may not necessarily agree, but can still validate and say, yeah, I can really see why you felt the need to behave that way, right? So validation is really, really huge when it comes to inner peace. So then what happens when others don't validate our perceptions of reality or our thoughts or feelings or beliefs about something, or maybe something that's been really major for us, you know, like, like my friend, her, 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 her realization or discovery that she'd actually been diagnosed with an issue. And it really answered a lot of questions for her. So for her, it was this like, you know, almost like, finally, I have an answer. And yet the people around her are like, whatever, and not giving her that validation that it sounds like she really needed to at least just kind of say, yeah, God, that, you know, we're really happy for you. That's great. And now it's sort of, when you know, now that you have a diagnosis, you can, you know, work with it, figure it out. She didn't get that. And so rather than feeling that, you know, jubilance or, uh, gr you know, um, um, gratification that, you know, her, you know, that she finally had an answer instead, it was kind of even more, you know, it was more wounding because now the people around her are just like, yeah, whatever that really, really hurts. And so that's why I want to address how it feels and what happens and how do we handle it? And the people around us just don't get it. They don't understand. Um, there are all kinds of reasons why people can't or don't or won't. Now notice the difference between those. Can't implies that they really just can't get it. Maybe they, they haven't been in that experience before. Maybe their mental or emotional apt, um, capacities are compromised. You know, maybe they're, they're addicted to something and they just can't get, you know, what you're trying to tell them. Um, maybe they aren't of an age that they could understand something. Um, but then there's also don't like, so they just refuse to. Um, and I would say that it's kind of like won't. There are some people who maybe they can get it. Maybe they have the mental capacity. Maybe they have the uh, an intellectual understanding, let's say, or maybe they have actually gone through something similar, but they won't. They won't validate what you're going through. They won't see what you're seeing. They're refusing to. And there are all kinds of reasons why that is. I mean, sometimes for example, in the situations with, you know, if you're dealing with someone with an addiction and you're trying to get through to them and say, look, you have a problem. There's too much at stake for them. And, and there's, it's too, I, I mean, for everyone, it's different, but I'll just say for a lot of people, it's too terrifying. They've got defense mechanisms that are keeping them from seeing that reality. Because if they were to start to really wake up to the fact that they have an addiction, that means their life would have to start changing and they'd have to start changing their actions or they'd have to realize that they're out of control. There are all kinds of reasons why people won't get it or don't get it. There are all kinds of reasons why people don't really want to understand or they don't want to validate or they don't want to empathize. We all have these defense mechanisms that are trying to protect these parts inside. And so it could be that who you're dealing with and talking to in that moment, you know, maybe they don't want to go there. Maybe they don't want to connect with the feelings that you have. Maybe they don't want to um, agree with your big realization because maybe they're like, yeah, yeah, I've been through this before. You've already had all these big, you know, ideas, let's say, or you've already had these other diagnoses and you're all excited about it, but I've been through this before. It, you know, nothing really comes of it. So sometimes it's because people are jaded, they're cynical. Um, sometimes it's because they, uh, I, I mean, okay, I'm going to give you an example of, of someone um, that, I, that I know um, is that she allowed her children, she allowed her children to be abused by her husband. And she's, this woman is still married to this man. And, you know, I thought to myself, why doesn't she wake up to the fact that like her husband's abusive and she allowed him to abuse the children? I mean, wouldn't you think a mother would want to protect her own children? But at this age, and she's a, quite a bit older than I am, if she were to suddenly wake up to that realization, it could be absolutely catastrophic to her identity and her sense of self. And so I'm not justifying that approach, but I'm saying, you, you know, sometimes some people have so much at stake as, as to why they won't, they refuse to actually see the truth. They just don't want to, or they just can't from wherever they are because of their defense mechanisms, et cetera. So I'm trying to 
give you a little bit of a, like if you're struggling with people around you not being able to see things the way you do or validate your feelings or your perception of reality or even see what's going on with themselves, just understand that a lot of times what you're running into is their defense mechanisms, their um, emotional wounds, their walls, their blocks, their agendas, um, because maybe you've had a realization of, I realize that this person's been controlling me, right? And what if they gaslight you and say, no, I haven't? Well, of course they're going to do that because they've been in control and they want to maintain control. You know, there's just all kinds of stuff going on. Um, but here's the thing. Independently of whatever that person's or those people's reasons are for not being able to see the way you see um, or validate your perception of things or even like have, you know, a connection with the reality that you see independently of whatever that is for them. Uh, it's still really important to do that for you. And I'm just going to get into this. There are reasons why they can't or won't. And you can try to figure that all that out all you want, but the reality is you can't change it. You can try. And especially if you've already tried and tried and tried, and it still hasn't worked, ask yourself, is this working? And what's the impact this is having on me? Because it could be that you're trying to convince them of what is real or whatever their issues are, whatever. Uh, or your issues, you're trying to share your issues, no matter how hard you try, if they're not getting it, notice how that's impacting you not to receive their validation and really ask yourself, is this working? Because what it can end up doing is draining your energy. And it can also end up undermining your perception of reality as you keep trying to fight with that person, let's say, or treat, keep trying to get them to get it like, like you get it. And in that case, it's really doesn't make sense to keep trying. And I'm just going to throw this out here. I'm really not usually like an advice giver, but I found there's just, there's no point in trying to get someone who doesn't want to see it your way. There's no point in trying to change their mind because there are all kinds of, they've got their own reasons why they are tethered to their perception or anti yours. And theirs may be valid too. I just want to point this out because especially when it comes to, you know, you know, like you may want to, I mean, I'm going to be honest, like, I mean, I've run into situations where it's like, someone's got a new guru who's their new spiritual teacher and they're all, oh, yeah, this person's amazing, et cetera, et cetera. But really the people around them can see that they're actually in kind of a cult-like relationship with that guru. You know, that also might be why the people around you were like, mm, I'm not seeing it your way. And no, I'm not going to validate this. So just a way of saying, like, it's also important to look at you know, where we are and even consider that, well, you know, who knows, maybe what I'm doing is not healthy for me. And they're, you know, they're just not wanting to go along with that. But the point is, there's no point in trying to change someone's mind. If you've already shared your truth, if you know this is what's true for you, from a place deep inside, and I've talked about that feeling of truth, from a place deep inside that's very calm and present and clear, if you know what's true for you and others aren't getting it or they're not, you know, they're not understanding, they're not feeling it, they're not, they're refusing to listen, whatever. It doesn't serve anyone to keep trying to convince them. And you might even ask yourself, why do I feel the need for these people to validate me and to validate my perception? What's going on there? Because what you're actually doing is you're giving them power. You're giving them power to decide whether or not you feel at peace <clears throat> with what you feel you know is true. And so while we might seek that, oh, that validation of, yes, this person understands me and yes, I'm feeling heard and val validated and understood, not everybody can give us that. And so in that case, just recognize you do not need their validation. In order for something to be true for you, and a representation of your truth, you do not need others to validate you as much as you might want them to. What matters is that you tune into what's true for you and you stay true to what's true for you and you trust your own truth and recognize where you might be 
the energy that you could be putting towards trusting your truth and following your truth. Notice how you're actually allowing, maybe you're allowing it, that energy to get sucked by other people or, or pulled away by trying to get other people to see it too or get other people to agree with you. You don't need other people to validate who you are, how you feel, what you think, your ideas, your dreams, your visions. You don't need none of us. It feels good. It's helpful. But just know that if this is your truth and what's true for you, then trust it. And that's where you're going to find the peace. You're not going to find the peace in trying to convince other people of things that they don't want to be convinced of. So that's something really important to realize. <clears throat> and that, but that also just because those people don't get it or they don't understand or they can't see it your way, doesn't mean there aren't people who do. And so that's something else that, you know, in that desire for validation and for other people to reflect back to us what we feel we know is true, then in that case, it might mean having to find people with whom you can connect on this level or with whom you can, you know, who you can trust and who can validate your feelings or your perceptions. One of the biggest healing things in that session that I had with that little girl uh, who was like, you know, you know, she wanted to like scream at her family, like, this is crazy. Why are you hurting each other? Why are you doing this to each other? You know, that was one of the biggest things in our session was when I was able to, to validate that little girl's feelings and say, yeah, I totally agree with you. That was very unhealthy what they were doing and they were doing it for their own reasons. And I, I wasn't saying it with judgment, but just to validate and say, yeah, and, and also validate how she felt living in that environment. That must have been so hard. That must have hurt so much, you know, and that really helped this inner, this woman's inner little girl. Ah. <sighs> So you might, so consider that it's also about the audience. You might need to just find your audience who can uh, really validate your feelings. Another thing too that I want to add, this is what I just thought of as I was talking about that inner little girl, is that you might actually sit with the parts of you, ask yourself, why do I feel the need for those people's validation? You know, if I know this is true for me and I really am clear in that, and yeah, I'm trying so hard to get them to see it, agree with me, et cetera. It could be that you have parts of you that are still carrying the wounds from, let's say childhood when no one believed you or you were falsely accused of something or you were, you know, whatever, you were misunderstood or when people just were not present with your feelings, let's say. You might also, what could also be happening is that that something, some part of you is getting triggered that needs to be healed. That's like that need, that's part that's needing validation and needing to be seen and heard. Well, you know how you can have some healing there? Seeing and hearing it for yourself. So even in the session that I had with the woman and this little girl, I mean, yes, I validated her feelings, but it wasn't as though the people from her family were there also going, yeah, 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 we see how you feel. No, they weren't there, but the woman was. And so the woman was able to reconnect with that little girl and validate her feelings and agree with her and to thank her for the wisdom that she had when she was little and to thank her for her, the abilities of being able to see what was true even when everything else was so crazy and everyone else was trying to convince her of other things. This little girl was holding on to that truth and was crying out for attention so that the woman would really reconnect with her and realize that the answers were always already inside of her. She didn't actually need them to validate. Uh, her feelings or her perceptions. I hope this is helpful as always. I'm sorry, this is a little bit discombobulated. I'm a little bit discombobulated being in a different place and having my bouncy computer <laughs> and it's like storming outside and the dogs are barking. It's kind of crazy. So I apologize, a little bit crazy. Um, but anyway, I hope this was helpful. And um, and uh, absolutely, I empathize with the need to, to feel validated, but I just hope this is helpful in understanding that there are ways you can do that for yourself so that you can be stronger within yourself and realize that you don't actually need other people to validate who you are, what you do, how you think and how you feel. All right, uh, I hope you're, I, I, I wish you well for this next week and I will see you next week. <laughs> bouncy, 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 bouncy. <laughs> see you later. <laughs>